Hello class, welcome to this learning journey on sex-linked traits. We have three aims for this uh, part of our genetics unit. The first one is to um, explain sex-linked traits and be able to solve sex-linked trait problems. You need to understand how the X and Y chromosomes are involved, and you also need to be able to explain and define what a carrier is by the time you're done with your assignment. Okay, class, so you're going to turn to the sex-linked part of your genetics packet. The textbook does not talk about sex-linked genetics, but you're responsible for knowing about it um, when we take the test. There are three things that you need to know about sex-linked genetics, and they're on this PowerPoint slide, so you need to make sure that you write them down, either on the back of your comprehension constructor, um, and or also in the example part of your packet. So when we're talking about sex-linked genetics, we're talking about traits that are found on the chromosomes, the X and the Y chromosomes that determine your sex or your gender. It's probably a better word would be gender-linked genetics, but it's called sex-linked genetics. And there are two chromosomes that are involved in sex-linked genetics or in determining gender, and that is the X and the Y chromosome. And to be a female, you need to have two of the X chromosomes. That's what makes a female a female. And to be a male, you need an X and a Y. And the Y is the gender determining a chromosome. It says, um, actually has a gene in it that says how to make a male. A male will give half of his offspring his X chromosome and the other half of his offspring, the Y chromosome. So when he goes to make sperm, half of his sperm will have an X, and half of his sperm will have a Y, whereas with the female, half of her eggs are going to have one of her X's, and the other half are going to have the other X's. And then when you look in this little Punnett square over here, right, it kind of shows you what your outcomes are going to be. So some important things to note. The Y chromosome is really, really small. And because it's small, there's not a lot of DNA-based pairs, and that means that there's not a lot of genetic information. So we, when we look at sex-linked traits, we're looking at the X chromosome. There's only one sex-linked trait that I know of that's on the Y chromosome. Everything else is on the X, and the X just contains way more information. And because males have only one X, if they get a recessive trait, they show the um, the trait, okay, because they only get one allele. So males only have one allele because they only have one X chromosome, and if it's recessive, it will show up. Whereas a female has two X chromosomes, so she gets two alleles. So females get two alleles for sex-linked traits, and males only get one allele. Then we have something called a carrier. This is a vocab word you guys need to write down. And those are people who have the recessive allele, but it's not shown. And in this case, for sex length genetics, there's only one choice for carriers, and that would be females. Males would not be carriers because they would show the trait. So carriers are people who contain the recessive allele. It's recessive, we can't see it. All right, that's why we would be a carrier. All right, in your genetics packet, there is a part There's a part for a key. We're going to look at hemophilia. Hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder. It is recessive, and um, it's found on the X de sex-determining chromosome. So for our key, and when we do these problems, we need to use an X and a Y. And so when we look right here up at the top, these are going to be males, and we know that because there's a Y. So I'm going to write down, because I have an X and a Y, this is going to be a male, right? And then the next one is an X and a Y, so it's going to be a male as well. And then when I look down here at these right here, I have two X chromosomes, so this will be female. Next one will be female, and the last one will be female, right? X and Y is a male, XX is female. So make sure you write that down, 
Make sure you remember that. When you write your pronounced square, you need to write the X and the Y or you're going to get really, really messed up. All right. This XN right here, that means that we have the X chromosome has an N allele. And the N allele right here, the big capital N, it means normal, no hemophilia. So this male is normal. Okay, second male that we have, the one right here, he has one X chromosome, and he, unfortunately, with his one chance of getting an allele, got the hemophilia allele. So this male has hemophilia. Like I said before, it's a blood clotting disorder, so people with hemophilia bleed a lot and um, will not stop bleeding unless they get medical help. Nowadays, we can help them out in the past, not so much. Okay, so next part of our thing here is we have... Um, our females, right? So the first female that we have, she has a XN, capital N, sorry, and a X capital N. So both of her X chromosomes contain a uppercase N. So she's homozygous for no hemophilia. So she has no hemophilia. She's normal. No homophilia, hemophilia, sorry. She's normal. Okay, this other female has a normal allele, but she also has a hemophilia allele. And so she's going to be normal, but we're going to say she's a carrier. So that means she contains so the hemophilia allele, but it's not shown. That's what we said a carrier was, right? So this young lady has a, she's normal, her blood clots, but she has a chance of passing this um, hemophilia allele on to her offspring. This last female has two recessive um, hemophilia alleles, so she is actually going to, she has hemophilia. If you did not get your chart filled out, I'm going to have you push pause for a second. Make sure you fill this chart out because this chart is going to be your key for the next several questions that you do in your packet. Okay, so the last slide you guys wrote down a key for hemophilia, and now we're going to do a hemophilia problem. I'm going to remind you that it is a recessive sex-linked traits, and sex-linked traits are found on the X chromosome, and females have two X chromosomes, and males have one X and one Y. So when we are looking at this question, the parents are given to us. So I have an XY, and because it's an XY, this is going to be a male. And this male it has a capital N, so it's a male that's normal. No hemophilia, normal male. This parent over here, two X's, so two X gender determining chromosomes, will be a female. She's normal because she has this capital N right here, she's normal, but she's a carrier because she has, when we look right here, right to there, she has a lowercase n, so she's normal, but she's a carrier. Nice writing, Leland. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. I can't tell if that's Cartier or carrier, but all right, so female. Uh, I'm going to erase some of this so that we can look at it a little bit better. Female, two X's, carrier, male, normal. Um, males can't be carriers because they're either going to have hemophilia or they're not. So the question is asking, what are the chances that those parents will have a hemophiliac child? So we are going to do a Punnett square. And this time when we do the Punnett square, we need to, and I cannot stress enough, put an X and a Y a chromosome on your Punnett square. If you don't, you're going to get so messed up. And we start talking about calico cats, which is your next lesson, you're really going to have a hard time. So I'm going to put the male, the sperm over here. Half of his sperm is going to get the X with the capital N, and half of his sperm is going to get the Y. Over here, I'm going to change colors. So over here, half of this female's eggs are going to have an X with a big N, and the other half are going to have her X with the little N. I'm going to write those um, down. So I have 
This mom will give an X with an N to half of her eggs, and she'll give this X with the capital N or the normal allele, no hemophilia, to the other half of her eggs. The male is going to give half of his sperm, is going to have an X with a normal allele for blood clotting, so no hemophilia. So that'll be half of his sperm. And the other half of his sperm is going to just have the Y chromosome. It's not going to have the hemophilia allele in it. It's just going to have the Y chromosome. So now when I look at this, I can determine the gender of my offspring and whether they have hemophilia or not. And so this first box here is telling me it's a girl and she's homozygous for not having hemophilia. She has two capital N chromosomes. She is not a carrier. She's not going to get hemophilia. Congratulations! Your second child is also another girl. This girl, however, has the um, blood clotting, so she is normal on one of her X chromosomes, and she has hemophilia, the recessive trait, on another chromosome. She is going to be a carrier like her mother was, but she's not going to have hemophilia. She's also going to be a carrier, and I'm pretty sure I spelled that road wrong. But okay, moving on. Congratulations, we now have a boy. This boy does not have hemo hemophilia because he has a normal capital N. And this boy right here, the X and the Y tells me it's a boy, does have hemophilia because he has the recessive N on his X chromosome. So when I look at this, the question is, who gave this boy right here who has hemophilia, his hemophilia allele? And the answer is actually his mother. Because when we look at uh, what I wrote down here, right, I did mom all in blue. So here's mom in blue, and here's mom in blue down here. And so this trait was inherited to the son from the mom's X chromosome. So the first question, what is the sex of the affective child, the one with hemophilia? It's the male that we talked about right here. And how many of the kids will be carriers? If a kid has hemophilia, they are not a carrier. So only this young lady right here is the carrier. So we only have one, and the gender will be female. Males cannot be carriers in this case because they're going to have hemophilia, which means they can't be a carrier. All right, let's do one more problem. This is the last slide. We're going to look at not just hemophilia, but also colorblindness. It is also located on the X sex chromosome. I'm going to remind you that females are two Xs and males are an X and a Y. Why? Because they're males. So I'm going to tell you that colorblindness is recessive. So colorblindness is recessive. So I'm going to label it this way. I'm going to make a key. N, capital N, is normal. And a lowercase n is colorblind. So it's a recessive trait. It's found only on the X chromosome. Remember I told you the X chromosome was bigger, which is why it has more of those traits. So I'm going to take a mom, I'm going to put mom in blue here, and she's colorblind. So mom is going to have, because she's female, has two X's. And in order for her to be colorblind, she has to have two recessive alleles. And then I have dad over here. So dad. And dad is normal. And dad is going to have an X. And a Y, because he's a boy. And he's normal, so he's going to get the normal allele. And then there's going to be nothing on the Y. The Y is so little that there's no space for any genetic information on allowing your body to create the um, cells to let your eye see color. Now I'm going to make a Punnett square for this case. So here comes my square. And I'm going to oh, like this. Then I'm going to put the mom back in blue. I'm going to put her on the top. So mom's got two X's. So half of her eggs are going to get an X with a with this first chromosome. Half of her eggs are going to get the X chromosome. Her other X chromosome. Both of them have the recessive allele. The dad is going to give um, half of his sperm. An X chromosome with a big N, those will be his girls. 
And any boys he has, he's going to give them the Y chromosome because they're boys. And I'm going to remind you again, there is no, absolutely none, zip zero. There's no allele here. Don't write one there. It's just on the X. All right, let's look at um, mom. So mom is going to give, actually every single egg of hers is going to have an X allele with a recessive N, which means she's going to give every single one of her kids a colorblind allele. Dad's going to give a I can see color allele to his girls. And he's going to give no color vision to his boys because he's just going to give them a Y, which is going to make them a male. So the fact of whether a boy can see color or not comes from mom. And we can see that, right? Because I did mom all in blue. So everything that comes from mom comes here. Everything from mom is over here. So when we look at this, the fact that these boys, they're boys because of their the Y from their dad, and their color, inability to see color comes from their mom. These girls right here can thank their dad because they can see color, but because of their mom, these girls in here are carriers. So I have two carrier girls, and I have two colorblind boys. So I have 0% of my boys are going to be able to see color. And who, it comes from mom. Mom can't see color. None of her sons can see color. Um, and so the mom in this case is determining uh, whether you can see color or not. Um, let's, I'm going to stop here for a second and we're going to actually look at mom. Okay, so how does a mom become, or a female, become colorblind? And I know there is an easier way to erase this. I have no idea. I should have probably read the manual. I don't know. Is there a manual? No one tells me these things. They just say, here's an iPad and be a teacher and learn how to use this technology. And I used to use a rock and chisel when I was in school and I liked it. And I know that some of you right now are going nuts because you're sitting here thinking, oh, you could just do this and it would disappear. And now I just look like a bunch of scratches and my screen's all... Um, right. I'd tell you a joke, but I don't even have one. Okay. That's good enough. Cause you're all right. So, mom, how the heck does how does mom become colorblind? So here's the mom. X, little n, X, little n. So where do these come from? So mom, this X right here came from her mother, and this X over here came from her dad. And her dad had a Y chromosome. So her dad had to be colorblind. So this young lady had a father that was colorblind. Okay. And we don't know about her mom. We know that her mom, so the mom of this woman here, we know that her mom was a carrier at least. And then we could go up to her and ask her and say, hey, can you see color or not? Um, and she, she, her other ex would either have a normal color vision or it would have, so she'd either have a big N or she'd have a little N, but we would have to go back. We don't have enough, we don't have enough information to determine this right here, um, what this is for the mom. But this young lady can thank her colorblind dad and her mom, who is a carrier, for being colorblind. If you still have questions after trying to figure some of these out, and or if you're in my class and you can show me how to do and explain everything and make the eraser work, I would appreciate that. Um, I hope this was helpful and I will see you on the next PowerPoint slide where we talk about sex-linked traits and calico cats.